Hi, I am Dr. Nidhi Kare. In my previous lecture on cross-cultural dimensions, I talked about the definition given by Go Professor Geet Hofstede on national culture and we also discussed the concept of national culture, the levels involved and how uh, and what culture describes. Now in today's lecture, I'm going to talk about the dimensions of national culture as described and researched by Hofstede. Students, in the context of globalization process and the growth of economical interdependence between countries, national culture is becoming more and more important. Peter Drucker in 1992 uses the best and the most concise way to express the cultural impact on management with the statement that what managers do is the same in the whole world but how they do it can be entirely different. Since management is dealing with the integration of people in some form of joint venture it is deeply ingrained in the culture. To succeed in the new economy it is essential to have knowledge of other cultures and behavior in their organizations. At the beginning of 21st century, cultural values make an impact on the types of organizations that emerge. Behavior that takes place in them, ways and directions they change, and the techniques to manage them. Understanding culture can equip person for the challenges of contemporary international business even within the national context. Nevertheless, Recognizing the importance of cultural differences helps managers understand their international partners and competitors and ultimately helps to improve their managerial skills. Models of culture provide a framework for understanding behavior encountered in business situations that initially appear odd, mysterious or difficult to understand. As business becomes more international and global, sophisticated models for understanding cultures become a necessity. National culture affects, to a certain extent, much of management and organizational behavior. Management practices suited for one cultural environment may bring about undesirable consequences in another. To avoid such problems, Modern managers have to understand the core concept of the culture. With the opening of the economy, lowering of the trade barriers and globalization of business, it has become imperative to understand the cultural values of the organizations of other countries too. Employees whose work takes them across cultural and national boundaries face different legal and political systems as well as different primary values and practices that characterize particular cultures. Managers in today's organizations have to think internationally because of the creation of a single market without borders and the requirements to work with people of all nationalities. In addition to the developed economies Developing Asia-Pacific countries such as China, India, South Korea, Japan, Taiwan and Hong Kong are growing in importance. Managers in these situations have to understand and cope with cultural barriers that exist between countries. So students, I hope you understand the importance of understanding cross-cultural dimensions. Hofstede conducted a study on the employees of a multinational company spread across different countries. His objective was to identify the similarities and differences across different cultural nations, across different cul national cultures. The situation was controlled so that it was not affected by the variation in the practices and the policies of the company's method of operations. Therefore, 
differences or similarities could be directly attributed to national cultures. As a result of this study, four dimensions of culture were identified and culture could be rated either high or low on these dimensions. These dimensions, as I mentioned before, are power distance, uncertainty avoidance, individualism, collectivism, and masculinity, femininity. Power distance is the extent to which a culture encourages superiors to exercise power over others in the organization. A culture which was rated high on power distance believed in exercising power over subordinates, thus creating power imbalance between the seniors and the juniors. In such cultures, there was low trust between people. Subordinates were passive. Organizational structure was tall. And decision-making was highly centralized. The countries in these categories are Philippines, Hong Kong, India, Venezuela and Brazil. In a culture which was ranked low on power distance, the relationship between the superior and subordinates was of mutual trust and joint decision making and action. The structure of the organization was flatter and there was decentralization. The examples of countries with low power distance were the UK, USA, the Netherlands, Australia and Canada. So students you see how power distance which is the extent to which a culture encourages superiors to exercise power over others in the organization. Now coming to uncertainty avoidance. It is the extent to which a culture encourages or discourages risk taking has been referred to as uncertainty avoidance. In countries with high uncertainty avoidance the need for security was found to be high and there were strict laws and stiff punishments for the deviants. The people of these cultures believed in working very hard for results, not changing jobs and not being sympathetic to disobedience. The examples include Greece, Portugal, Japan, Peru and France. In cultures rated low on uncertainty avoidance, ambiguous situations were more tolerable and less importance was attached to adherence to rules. Managers were prepared to take risks and believed in their own self-competence. Denmark, India, Great Britain, Sweden and USA were categorized as countries with low uncertainty avoidance. Individualism Collectivism This refers to the extent to which a culture comprises of individualistic features or believes in collective or group approach to deal with the situations around them. The individualist countries are focused towards inward concerns based on self and family with importance given to achievement and personal initiatives. The UK, Canada and USA would be individualistic societies. In a collectivist culture, the organization is treated as family with greater loyalty and commitment towards it. The emphasis is on belonging to others and on the power of group decision making. The examples of collectivist cultures are Singapore, Taiwan and Mexico. Masculinity Femininity This dimension refers to the types of accomplishments valued by a particular culture. In masculine societies the emphasis is on money, material and ambition and there is clarity about male and female roles in the society. People in this culture are encouraged to be individual decision makers. The examples of masculine cultures would include countries such as UK, Germany, South Africa and Italy. 
in cultures where feminism is present emphasis is on cooperation care quality of life and a very blurred distinction between the gender roles there is more autonomy for the employees and decisions are taken collectively the netherlands and scandinavia are the examples of feminine cultures hofstede added another dimension in 1993 to this list to differentiate between cultures this was called as long term orientation this refers to personal thrift perseverance and adoption of traditions to the modern world this orientation is the feature of the east asian culture so now students you have seen how an international manager bears more responsibility than his counterpart who has to operate only in one culture or country and this is why understanding the cross cultural dimensions is very very important now in the next lecture i am going to talk about the steps for adjusting in international scenario thank you